came home from my first real vacation in seven years. And yes, I have moved, but this is what I was greeted by. This is the hell strip that I was talking about, so it's starting to fill in. And I don't know why they call it the hell strip, probably because nothing ever wants to grow there. But these big fluffy things are called called the uh, clary sage, the ajugas, with the end tied the river birch. He's getting quite tall. The hydrangea that I whacked. This is why you whack them so they fill right out. He's about to bloom. through here. I'm still trying to get rid of all this grass in here. Whoop, step through right behind the wall of shrubbery. Poppies and the clear sage. The mobiles that Keep the deer out of the yard are still going despite having gone through the uh, tropical storm. But when I came home, the basins had collected three and a half inches even after hot days burning. And over here, I'm not sure why, but the first flower bud on this one just rotted off and it dried, rotted and then dried, so I don't even know. Anyway. Sweet peas are finally starting to get tall enough I can tie them up to the arbor. I have somewhere in here. You can't see the sweet peas underneath. And they're starting to get long enough to bloom just before the heat. And then I've got morning glories sprouting. It's dead center, that's a morning glory. This whole arbor will be blue. You see the sunflowers that did survive. The rabbits have not survived the wind. So I may or may not. Don Juan is blooming. This whole arch will be covered in these big red blooms. Very, very pretty rose, I have to say. He's right up my alley. Perfect pollinators. Which is my new obsession with pollinators. Shade garden, dry shade bed that all the water gets sucked up. Obviously I still haven't put in the, the blanks, but you know, all the edging will go in probably, maybe today. I don't know, there's an awful lot of weeding to do, but it's all for Christmas thunderstorm, so. <sighs> the gnome dome. Yep, da 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 da. And when I came home, I was greeted by the first of my bee balm is finally blooming, but this uh, hollyhock that I was talking about is still going. She's almost up to the roof. Almost. Isn't she pretty? Get up there. So that's that particular hollyhock. I've got many, many more. The Agastache. Hummingbird mint. Baby coleus. All that good stuff. Baby foxgloves and canna, hopefully. Those will get up and move in here pretty soon. Yeah. Walk around the backyard. Ah. So today's mission is the cicadas seem to be finally starting to die down. We can take the net off that baby river birch and that is my curly willow which had to hit the stake <laughs> with the lawnmower so that's not good but he'll still be fine I'll take the bag off and restake it yeah I need to trim this sucker back because he's going to town again and over here all the stuff that I planted this year starting to bloom so we've got Butterfly bushes, these will get huge. The clary sage, you saw how big that gets out front. There's one single sunflower coming up. The rabbit missed. I don't know why they eat all my sunflowers this year, but they are. Anyway, obviously need to get in here and weed because the only thing that's supposed to be in that center bed is the thyme. And 
tomatoes and the peppers. But I'm about done battling rabbits because the plants are not quite as tender anymore. I'm going to start taking the cages down. We're taking the fencing down and let the uh, ducks do their thing. The duck pond, all my tropicals are surviving well, I guess. Keep the water moving so that mosquitoes don't like it. Another mobile. The hardy geranium I need to get in the ground. They're just sitting and chilling, recovering from being dug up. This is rabbit forage. Basically all the vegetables that just volunteered room in there. So yeah. The hostas don't like it here, so I'm gonna dig them up and move them. And one of my climbing roses is blooming. The other one, the rabbit ate all of the buds. Oh bastard. Anyway, sweet peas going up. Hopefully they'll keep going. Probably not, but it's gonna get real hot here in a minute which means they won't like it. Lots and lots of tomatoes have volunteered back here, so I'm not worried about that crop this year. <laughs> Might just run them all over with the weed whacker. Massive pile of compost that needs to be turned and is growing. That stupid broccoli with the tree branch trunk or the tree trunk on it is underneath this whole pile. And look, he's sending up blooms again. He refuses to die. It's really weird. This whole thing. See, this is the problem I have with scattered seeds. Because then the weeds get in there, and your seeds, if they did pop up, just get choked by the weeds. Fooey. Fooey on that. Anyway. So the iris are done blooming, and the daisies are about to start. This little guy is a new addition. Let's see. Strawberries are not happy this year. Hopefully they'll get rooted and be happy next year. But nobody's doing anything so far. Who knows? I said they're not pink lilies. More sweet peas on that. Trellis coming up. I'm gonna go through and deadhead this yarrow so it blooms some more. I'm in love with the lemon mint. Look at that. It didn't bloom last year. And I got to harvest the first artichoke yesterday when I came home. Let me see how many more each one puts on. As you can see, let's see if I can find them. See that little guy? See that little guy. Yeah, so I just ripped them off. Probably not the best thing, but I have not fertilized out here, so it might be time to feed. Because the time walkway that I was talking about is blooming. So I think I'm going to yank some things out like, say, this guy. And let him let his seeds dry. That's uh, the Japanese mustard. That's just huge now. But now it's time for other things to come in and fill up the space. So the cherry tomatoes... This bed all has perlite mixed into the compost and broke up the clay with it and dug it in with the tiller. So it's kind of doing its own thing, but it's slow to start and that, that's a soil science thing. So I'm kind, of make, I'm kind of making it work harder than it needs to this year, but by next year it will have all broken down and be feeding the uh, veggies. Anyway. The Remembrance Day poppy is still going a little nuts. I've started yanking those out because my Baptisia is coming back. And he needs more sun than he's been getting. They've been blocking it. But he looks much happier this year, so I'm going to take these guys out. Especially now that the daisies are about to take over right behind it. So the annuals are the red. And then... Some are tall, some are short, but yeah, you can see what happens to poppies if they start to die back and they all look like crap. <laughs> Not sure if 
any of my peppers have survived under mm -hmm. here. Oh no, there's one. I almost stepped on him too. But uh, where is he? Bright green. Bright green over here on the right, surrounded by poppy leaves. Very, very small. So he doesn't get very big. These, however, will get huge. If you remember from last year, these get to be about three feet tall. Huge, big marigolds. So there will be a sea of yellow and orange back here. Who knows how much of what. But anyway. And then also, very, very happy lavender. Yay! Volunteer calendula. Right there. We still have some beets, a little basil. Hey, what are you doing on my patio? Get off my patio. You hear them beeping? Yay, get off my patio. Move it. I hear somebody else causing trouble. Get off my patio. You're the one, Goldie. Move it. Get on up out of here. Troublemakers. Give them a whole yard, they want that. Look at how tall these babies are. He's like, he's as tall as I am. Well, almost. Maybe, I would say they're four foot eight. I'm five three. So, yeah, I don't know what I did to uh, deserve the railroad lilies that are so unbelievably tall, but they are. This is my black cherry tree wrapped up for cicadas. The wind kind of started to unwrap it. So, yeah, now I'm going to unwrap it for the cicadas and rewrap it for birds. So I get to actually eat some of those cherries. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Moving on. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. This is the raspberry getting going. It's finally, elephant's ears finally started popping up. But yeah, these. I'm in love with the hollyhocks. Aren't they pretty? So yeah, it feels a little, a little overwhelming. A little bicolor hollyhock over here. And hopefully these will just keep reseeding. And we'll have a wall of hollyhocks. These aren't nearly as tall as the ones in the front, but I'm not sure. The one in the front, I, well, I purchased these, I started from seeds. So these are a little bushier. Anyway, we'll walk away with the squash and the watermelons are starting to get going along with some other transplants so we'll see what happens back there lots and lots and lots of water back here the bee balm is blooming but yeah the time walkway is really working out all that all that white is time it's all earthy it smells fantastic when i mow it Right now, that's pure pure honeybee food. That's what that is. That's happy. And the brassicas have all set seed and fallen over from the weight of it. So, this all gets yanked out. This is a cool weather crop. I'll have lots and lots and lots of seeds. Look at that. It's ridiculous. All that brushiness is all seed head. <laughs> Don't need to buy them anymore. <laughs> anyway. You can see in the back the big spike with that ball on it. Those are leeks. And so it's just about time to start harvesting leeks. And it looks like I could go through and have a trim on my snapdragons over here. Just to get them to bloom some more. And then I've got another black hollyhock right there. Yay! And before it gets out of control, I'll come through here and yank out the chokeweed. So if there's anything that reseeds itself in a ridiculous manner, it's that viney weed chokes everything, thus the name chokeweed. I'm looking for, I planted all of this, <laughs> all, I see one hiding under the chokeweed. This was all 
foxglove. There's another one. We should all be filling in with rosettes this year. This guy is the foxglove and that guy is a volunteer tree. So it looks like the rabbits maybe ate most of the foxglove, which is kind of surprising because it's poisonous. <laughs> but you know, whatever. This might be why I had to start so many. The same hosta that I'm digging up over there is doing just fine over here, so who knows? Who can say? Bilby's coming up. And looks like, yeah, looks like this hydrangea. This sad little thing in the middle is going to have to get transplanted out front. That's one that I started, that's a sun hydrangea, that I, like the big one that I have out front started from the cutting and then that's an Annabelle that I started from the cutting and it looks like the Annabelle is really happy whereas the other is not happy at all and the ferns coming in are obsessed with ferns this year my ferns aren't uh, they're not as fast to grow as I thought they would be like the one back here this is called a, a Godzilla fern and he looks like a Japanese painted if you look at him. But he sends up huge fronds. Like he's supposed to get about three feet, three, four feet tall and same wide once established. So patience, people, patience. I am impatient in the garden. Same thing with this Hakone grass. This is the the bicolor. Just looks like a sprig of grass right now, but it will get big mound. And then I have the golden one over here. And then that is an autumn fern. This, I can't remember, I think that's an autumn fern too. Anyway, more columbines. And three little bachelor's buttons. I'm never doing those again, I don't think. They just don't seem to fill out the way I want them to. But he's pretty, pretty bipolar. It's kind of fun. Anyway, that's it. I think. Oh no, there's a shade garden too. Oh yeah, forgot about that. But yeah, here's you. What's up, noisy breeches? It's usually the call that she puts out when she sees a rabbit. If they all start in on it, it means they're a snake. Then they'll, like, torment the snake. So I have to chase them away. Anyway. <sighs> How's that for a garden update? <laughs> Might get better once I actually weed <laughs> the tree that fell over and broke the fence. There. Good times. A better example of an autumn fern over here. This bed stays pretty moist. has almost no sun so it uh, seems to be growing a little better but some other ferns up in here so I'm pretty sure those are ostrich should be ostrich ferns in here there's a Japanese painted canthus more hostas Chukura, what in the world is she going on about? That tree skirt, the ring around the base, is supposed to be all Vinca and Violets. Hopefully it'll get established next year and spread out. What are you hollering about? It's very hard to say. What? What's your deal? <laughs> what? Say hello. Yes, very much weeding to be done. And the grass was very, very tall when I came home. So, I still need to do the trimming and all that crap, but 
most part. there we go.